Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what may or may not, if you don't enjoy it, uh, might be a new series on my channel where I simply just make some Smash Bros guides and explain some concepts and then we look at top players doing those concepts. And for this first video, I was going to look at the idea of bait and punish. Now, put very simply, this is where you bait your opponent into doing an option, and then you punish them for it. So, first I'll show you some real life examples. Holly, 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 high five, high five. Scuba dive! Here, I perfectly baited Holly into going for the high five and punished it by moving out of the way, outspacing her move. Now, the first step to having good bait and punish is actually all coming into your movement and keeping your distance between your opponent. Now, the perfect spacing for having a good bait and punish game is to stay at about roll distance. And you'll see these two people really play at about this distance right here. And they'll keep this distance and this is about one roll away. So I like to say that they are playing at about roll distance. Now, Dark Wizzy, he goes in for the grab right here to try and grab Goblin. But he has baited this option. He's going to run back, outspace it, and then he's going to come back in and punish it. So this is what I like to call the standard bait and punish. This is the bait and punish everybody knows and loves. Let's just put it on slow-mo right now. Where you dash back, your opponent gets baited in to moving forward, and then you run back in for the punish. And that this is just a beautiful display of the standard bait and punish coming out already but it once again it all starts keeping this distance where you're at about roll distance and you're kind of running in and out of their range so right now he's running out of the range he outspaced a move and now he can punish it with this nice little combo here so that is what i like to call the standard bait and punish and now we have the reverse bait and punish now this is called the reverse bait and punish because instead of moving out of the way of your opponent and then coming back in to punish them you instead get your opponent to come to you, bait them into running towards you, and then you meet them and hit them first as they're coming towards you. Oh, you spilled spaghetti. So right here, I have baited Holly to look down, and she has run straight into my finger. I've, I've got her really good. And so here, coming up, we are going to have an example of this reverse bait and punish coming from Dark Wizzy. Uh, once again, you'll notice the roll distance now. Really have a look at it. Look at how well they're keeping that roll distance. So what Dark Wizzy is doing, he's trying to set up the reverse bait and punish by running back a lot. And he's going to keep running back, dashing back, and forcing Goblin to really run forward all the way over here if he's going to reach Dark Wizzy. However, on look how long this arrow is. On this long journey, he's vulnerable this whole time. So if Dark Wizzy then runs forward, hits Goblin at any point along this long line, he's just going to get a free hit in neutral. So let's watch this once at quarter speed and then we'll speed it back up. So look, Dark Wizzy playing very passive, keeping his distance. Goes for a reverse bait and punish here, just misses it. And then he goes and he does the same thing again. So once again, back to that roll distance. Runs back. And now Goblin is thinking, oh, Dark Wizzy's all the way over there. Let me just walk over and hit him. He's committing so hard, he's getting bait and punished, but it's just the reverse. So instead of you outspacing the move and hitting them, you space the move first, and then they have to run all the way towards you, and then you hit them before their move even comes out. So we'll look. Goblin's going to try and run in all the way over here, but Dark Wizzy's just got to intercept him right in the middle here, right in the middle of the arrow. Beautiful. So this is what I like to call the reverse bait and punish. So let's watch this in full speed now, see if you guys can get it. So he's spacing about roll distance, playing very passive, and then tries to do the reverse bait and punish here, doesn't get it to land. Roll distance, roll distance, bam, catches him right there. So yeah, that is the reverse bait and punish, and that is actually really good in Smash Bros Ultimate because a lot of moves are very safe. For example, let's say Mario outspaced Krom's landing neutral air, like his sword attack. Krom actually doesn't really have much lag, so if you dodge the move and he lands, he's pretty safe. He can act straight away. You're not going to punish him. So a lot of the time, you wanted to use the reverse bait and punish against characters like Krom who don't have much end lag because 
If you outspace their move, you're not going to punish them. So you want to meet them and hit them before their move even comes out. And that is what Dark Wizzy has so um, excellently demonstrated for us here. Now let's take a look at game two here. So he's probably caught onto the fact that Dark Wizzy wants to go for that reverse bait and punish. Kind of outspace and then hit the down air. And there it is perfectly. Now I did look at this game before, so I knew that was going to happen. But look at that. Now... Goblin hitting Dark Wizzy back with a standard bait and punish. Goblin runs in, baits Dark Wizzy into doing attack, outspaces the move, and hits him for it. Perfect spacing on that. That was a standard bait and punish. You run forward, run back, hit them for doing their move. And that is just perfect adaptation coming out there from Goblin to switch it up. All right, so let's check out, let's check out the final form of bait and punish. Robert McDobber. Long for Okay, buddy. All right. That's what I want to game do. Louis? Did you catch it? So the third and final bait and punish is the jump bait and punish. Now, I'm sorry, I don't really know how to give a real life example for this, but this is the type of bait and punish where, say this is a standard bait and punish. You're here, they're here, you run back, they run to attack you, you've outspaced it, and then you hit them back. That's the standard bait and punish, we've learned that. The reverse bait and punish, this is just a quick catch up. You are all the way over here, they're gonna try and run all the way to get you, you hit them, meet them in the middle, attack them first. That is the reverse bait and punish. The jump bait and punish is where you're here on the ground, or so they think, they go to attack you, you jump over them, come down, and hit them. That is the final, the jump, bait, and punish. And right here, Zachary does it perfectly. We're elegant. He thinks Zachary's gonna be around here in the corner. Zachary outspaces this forward air, not by going backwards, because he can't. He has no more stage. Instead, he jumps over the forward air, comes down, bam, hits him straight in the face with a neutral air. Ready, ready. Jumps over and then hits elegant. Fox is really good at the jump bait and punish. You probably see this a lot when foxes jump up and land with a neutral air. But this is the final type of bait and punish. And this type of bait and punish is really effective against characters like Luigi who have like their scary grab. You don't want to be playing a lot on the ground against them because if you get grabbed once it's over. So you want to use a lot of the, oh, I'm on the ground. No, I'm not. I've jumped up above you and then I'm going to I'm gonna land and hit you. Here we have Mars playing against Elegant. He's probably going to have the same tactic here. Where see how he does that full hop? Because then if Luigi grabs at any moment, he's going to jump over this grab and then be able to punish Elegant. So yeah, if you're playing, it depends on the character, what type of bait and punish you want to go for more. But against Luigi, you would, I would say you would want to use more of the jump bait and punish. But then, if you're at high percent versus Luigi, then Luigi wants to hit you with up smash. So you don't want to be above him as much. And then you want to go more for the standard bait and punish. So it's depending on what character you're versing, what kind of movement you should have. So now, hopefully you have a rough understanding of what all these different types of bait and punishes look like. So let's take a look at some top players showing us some more examples. All right, we have MK Leo's Joker versus Glutiny's Wario. These are two characters that love bait and punish. Joker, I would say maybe Greninja is a bit better, but Joker could possibly be the best character at just the standard bait and punish and even the jump bait and punish in the game. He is such a slippery and quick character. And there is a beautiful example of the bait and punish. And this is kind of a ledge trap bait and punish, but it's still a bait and punish. MK Leo has Glutiny on the ledge here, walks forward, just dashes back, just perfectly avoiding this forward air. That's what you can do if you're the best player in the world. And then getting the punish right there. And the bike just lands on him for, for some extra damage as well. But yeah, a beautiful standard bait and punish there. This is another standard bait and punish. Let me know if you see where it, where it hits. Did you see it? Okay, so let's slow it down. Now, once again, remember to have a good bait and punish game. You need to have great spacing in neutral at about that roll distance. Right now, this is exactly what you like to see. This is perfect distance. And I'm guessing, I don't know, if I keep this line there, MKLeo will try and keep this same distance. Look at that, the spacing. Look how he's staying with the line. That is incredible. 
just dashing back, avoiding this forward air, coming back in for the punish. So he just micro movement, just moving out, just moving back in. See how now he's over this line? That is just great spacing from MKLeo. So let's watch it again in full speed, see if you can get it now. I'll keep the line there. Beautiful, beautiful bait and punish, just in, out, in, out, back air to attack after Gluttony misses that forward air. Now here, Gluttony t hits MKLeo with a bit of his own medicine, just as we saw before, right on the ledge. A lot of people in this situation, he misses that down air. I feel like they would shield or spot dodge or something. Instead, Gluttony dashes back, baits him in, punishes him. And that is a brutal punish. You can't do that to your kids anymore. Big slap across the face right there. All right, so that was some good examples of the standard bait and punish. But now we have a very explosive, very aggressive matchup right now between Mars and Nairo. And so, can you guess which kind of bait and punish is gonna work most effectively against these aggressive players. The reverse bait and punish. Because Nairo especially, he is just going to be charging in looking for that neutral air. So if you can kind of get in there and hit him first, that is going to be your best approach against someone who is playing very aggressive like this. All right, so let's watch this one at quarter speed first and then full speed. So Mars, he is going to be the one landing the reverse bait and punish. So look at this. He's going to be playing very defensive here, trying to keep that spacing. He's probably going to roll or get to the other side of him. Dash back. Yep, okay. Playing very passive. Makes it look like he's going to run away. And Nairo, he can't help himself. If Mars is running away, Nairo is chasing him down and going to be very aggressive. And so what you're going to see here is Mars, instead of just playing defensive all the way over here, instead, he's going to stop, turn around, put out a hitbox right here. And Nairo is just going to run headfirst into it. Bam, where are you running to? So let's watch that at full speed now. It's very quick, all of these things, but that's Smash Bros. Smash Bros is like chess at a, at a million miles an hour. So Mars, he's playing very defensive. Looks like he's about to walk away and try and run away, but then he just turns around, puts that down smash down and hits Nairo straight with it. Perfect example of the reverse bait and punish. All right, here we go, new game. Oh, and there it is again. Beautiful example of the reverse bait and punish. Did you guys see it? Did you catch it? I think you guys are catching on now, so I'm going to leave it in full speed. Mars, he dashes back. Nairo's going to run forward, but reverse bait and punish. Catches his movement, runs straight back in and catches him. And so, yeah, this is a great example of why it's good to use this versus aggressive players, because they're just going to run head first into your move. Okay, so I'm hoping you guys have learned a fair bit, but let's f finalize the video by watching the master himself, MKLeo, to show us an example of all of these different types of bait and punish in, in a pools match versus poor, poor Bang Man, the Diddy Kong player. Uh, I think it's actually really good to watch pools matches of top players because you just get to see them destroy people and see what actually makes them a good player. Because when it's a good player versus a good player, you can like you can't always tell what is making them become like a top player, why they're top five in the world. But when you watch them play a pools match, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. This guy is nuts. But yeah, now you've made it this far in the video, let me know if you are enjoying the um, idea of this series and you want me to do more concepts. Drop a comment, especially if you want to um, see me cover a different aspect of the game. But yeah, drop a like and let me know if you want to see more of these guides. But let's take a look and see if we can find some bait and punishes here. Um, MK Leo Joker up against the Diddy Kong. Oh, there we go. I won't even do that in slow-mo. I think you guys get the idea now, but this is a standard bait and punish. A lot of people, after they miss that jab attack, they would have shielded. Instead, he dashes back, outspaces, Diddy Kong's move, punishes him. Beautiful standard bait and punish. Oh, brutal standard bait and punish there. And that is a classic on the Diddy Kong side B. I'm sure you guys have done this to like a Fox player as well before. But make sure you set it up because you're not going to hit good players if they um if they see that you're just waiting here. No one's going to do the side B. It, like online, I get that you could land that, but if you're versing in people in tournament, they're just not going to do it because they see you standing there. They're like, I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to do a side B. That would be silly. 
So look at how MKLeo kind of sets this up. MKLeo comes in here, walks forward like he's going to mess around with the banana, but instead he just slowly walks back like a friggin' boss. Perfectly spaces, of course. Best player in the world, MKLeo. Gets that forward smash, and there's another beautiful standard bait and punish. All right, so here we go, game two, and this is brutal. MKLeo must have got the download or something, and uh, we've already started off with a jumping bait and punish. MKLeo on the ground, jumps up above Bang's grab, and then comes down with the landing there, which combos into grab, blah, blah, blah. He gets 100%, but like, <laughs> these is a really good bait and punish for characters like Fox or like Joker, where you, or like Rob, where you get your combo started off your landing aerials. You want to use the jumping bait and punish. So we're probably going to be seeing MKLeo jump up and down a lot in this game, because as well, remember, it's the character you're versing. Versing Diddy Kong, Diddy Kong isn't really going to juggle you if you're up above him jumping all the time. But if you're doing the standard bait and punish, he can just kind of chuck a banana at you, use his down tilt, use his side B. He's really good at dealing with that. So you want to use more jump bait and punish. However, if you are versing a character like Cloud, you would not want to be jumping above him in that big buster sword as much. So yeah, you've got to think about the character that you are versing. All right, in the corner. There we go, the bait and punish. Look how good his dashbacks are. So he's staying at around roll distance. And now he's got the banana, dashes back, punish. Beautiful. Oh my god, he just caught him right out of the air. Oh my god, he just snatched his banana right out of the air. And there was that another. He just dashed back, covered the roll. How good is these dash backs? It's all about the bait and punish. Out of here. If you don't have that roll distance spacing, you're not punishing his roll. That is why M. Kaleo is always ready to... Uh, to punish these and oh my god he doesn't stop does he another jump bait and punish jumps up above diddy kong he could have got a landing aerial but nah he's got the banana so just chuck that down get the combo off that this is just brutal right now oh my mk leo another standard bait and punish you guys saw that outspace the side b but yeah i just want you guys to remember that to set this up it's all about that spacing at around roll distance and you can see let's put it in half speed and let's just look at mk leo's movement here he's about roll distance that he's always just happens to be at that perfect distance goes in for the jumping bait and punish see how he he goes close to him and then jumps away hoping that bang did anything he didn't bite he threw the banana at the landing instead oh my god how did he read that that is amazing Oh, another jumping bait and punish. Just jumping over that grab again. Lands, jumps, landing aerial into grab. Great follow-up for Joker. Oh, that was so sick. Okay, MKLeo just kind of goes on to destroy him here. But I think you guys get the picture of all the different types of bait and punish. You can go back and watch the video again if you don't quite get some bits. Like, oh, I didn't quite get the uh, jump bait and punish. I think just go back and watch it again. But yeah, let me know what you think of this Smash Bros guide. Uh, what could I do to improve it some more? Let me know. And uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>